I don't know about you, but I'm not good at feeling hunger. As soon as I feel it, I fill it. And I know that that sounds like a privileged thing to say, Many of us, I think, have this relationship to food and hunger. As soon as we feel our hunger, we look for ways to fill our hunger. We don't like to sit in it for very long. And I think the same thing is true with our emotions, at least when it comes to the negative emotions, and probably especially when it comes to the emotion or the feeling of grief. We don't like to sit in our grief very long or very well. I don't think we know what it means to sit and grieve. As soon as we feel those negative emotions, we look for ways to fill them or at least fill our lives with things that mute our emotions or push them down or help us ignore them. We aren't good at intentionally sitting with our grief. Good Friday can be called Good Friday because we sit on this side of the completed work of the cross. We know that with Good Friday and all of the grief that comes with it, there still comes Easter Sunday. There's still a sunrise, there's still resurrection, there's still an empty tomb. But for the people who lived with Jesus, his friends and his followers, they didn't have the promise of Sunday to look forward to when they were met with his death on that Friday, without the benefit of hindsight to help sustain them through their season of grief. Good Friday tells the story of Jesus' death. Good Friday begins in darkness and ends in darkness. It includes Jesus' betrayal by Judas being handed over to the guards and then eventually put on trial in front of Pilate. It includes him being whipped and beaten, being forced to carry a piece of wood that he would later be attached to and hung up on a cross. And then finally, it includes Jesus's death on the cross and his burial in a tomb. The accounts of Good Friday end with a stone being rolled in front of that tomb and Jesus's body being left again in complete darkness. And while I'm not sitting in front of a tomb, this does in some sense to me feel like a grave. It's a hole in a rock wall, big enough for a body, and it is dark. When Jesus' body was sealed in that tomb, it had to be done quickly. It had to be done without all of the proper preparations being made because that Friday was the beginning of the Jewish practice of Sabbath. From sundown on Friday to sundown on Saturday, the Jewish people adhered to all of the laws of the Sabbath, including not working. And that meant burying Jesus, leaving him in a tomb unprepared, without wrapping his body properly, without adorning it with spices and oils and perfumes. And it meant going away and putting their grief, not on pause, but certainly prolonged. Those who mourned Jesus' death had to sit with the reality of it for an entire day. They would have to wait to return on Sunday morning to complete all of the burial processes and in many ways continue their grieving. The invitation of Good Friday is not to skip to the end of the story. It's not to skip to resurrection. It's not to use the gift and benefit of hindsight. And it's to allow ourselves to feel the depth of emotion that comes with the death of somebody we look to as friend. It's an invitation to enter into all of the emotions that Jesus's own friends would have been feeling to allow yourself to grieve, to allow yourself to feel your own emotions. Don't force through to the other side of your grief. Don't push through and, and make something other than it is. Allow yourself to feel your emotion. Friday ends with the tomb being sealed. Darkness and its promise even in those dark moments, is that there is not a single place inside of human experience that Jesus did not already also experience, even death. 
So this Good Friday, if it's healthy for you to do so, we want to encourage you to try some sort of fasting. At very least, allow yourself to feel hunger. When you feel hungry, pause and think about the weight of the emotion connected to this day. Use your physical need, the feeling of physical need for food, to remind you of equally your physical and spiritual need for the cross and the resurrection and the life that Jesus has on offer. You see, our physical sensation, this need for food, reveals our dependence on something. And I think grief reveals our emotions, reveal our need for God in our life. And so this Good Friday, we invite you to confront all of it, the death of Jesus, the full wide range of emotion connected to that event so many years ago. Maybe for the first time, certainly in a new light and hopefully in a way that reveals your dependence on this moment in your life.